India is on a high growth path. The approach paper to the 11th plan emphasizes that rapid economic growth is essential to reduce poverty. Urban centers are increasing in numbers and size. The Indian population is growing exponentially. From 1,155 million in 2008, it is projected to become 1,470 million by 2030. The urban population is expected to grow from 290 million to 590 million by 2030. It is approximately 30% of the total population today and is likely to become 40% by 2030. The scale of urban expansion will bring unprecedented multiple pressures on the environment. Both income growth and population growth are drivers of increasingly energy-related CO2 emissions. According to a UNFCCC report, cities account for roughly 75% of global energy consumption and 80% of greenhouse gas emissions. Greenhouse gas emissions in the Indian cities could increase from 230 million tons in 2005 to 1.6 billion tons by 2030. India needs to substantially increase its per capita energy consumption to provide a minimally acceptable level of well-being to its people. In our efforts to grow as a rich nation, India must urgently pay attention to the climate change issues and built it into all its development efforts. United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, or the UNFCCC, refers to climate change as a change of climate that is attributed directly or indirectly to human activity that alters the composition of the global atmosphere. An increase of 0.4 degrees centigrade has been observed in our surface temperature. There has been a rise of sea level at the rate of 1.06 to 1.75 millimeters per year. The Himalayan glaciers are under threat. The river systems of Brahmaputra, Indus and Ganges are likely to suffer from decrease in snow cover. There is an increased salt intrusion threat. The precipitation patterns are likely to change. The distribution of important vector species may get altered, leading to diseases spreading into newer areas. There may be a large impact on forests and biodiversity, and the quality of fruits and vegetables may get significantly affected. The incidence of extreme weather conditions, like cyclones, floods and droughts, may also increase. Throughout the world, there is a realization of the need and urgency of taking action for mitigation and adaptation to climate change. The UNFCCC, IPCC, COP and several other international organizations are all meeting regularly to address this issue. India is a signatory to the UNFCC and has recently announced its National Action Plan on Climate Change, the NAPCC. It has eight missions, of which the solar mission is the number one and perhaps the most important mission. The vision is to make India's economic development energy efficient. Over a period of time, there must be a shift from economic activity based on fossil fuels to one based on non-fossil fuels and from reliance on non-renewable and depleting sources of energy to renewable sources of energy. The target of the solar mission is to install 22,000 megawatts of grid-connected solar power generation capacity. The current situation in 2010 is that we have about 9,000 megawatts 
of solar photovoltaic generation, but we do not have a single megawatt level solar power plant. The thermal generation capacity today is at 1,46,000 megawatts for the country as a whole. The clock is ticking fast for the first phase. By 2012 to 2013, grid connected plants supplying 1000 megawatts, rooftop and small plants producing 100 megawatts and off-grid applications generating 200 megawatts have to be up and running. The mission requires drastically ramping up solar energy production in India. Kolkata is one of the climate change hotspots in the world and is given a vulnerability rating of 7 on 10. It tops in the list of gross CO2 emissions in India. These impacts will only grow in the time horizon of 2050 as the city population rises and with it comes increasing development and urbanization in a metropolis which has already grown and sprawled largely in an unplanned way. Unless we agree to act, the time is now. Say after 100 years you will not find coal. I am sure you will get only nuclear power and renewable after 100 years. But for the next say 50 years time, we are to gradually, you know, shift from coal to renewable. Now the conventional energy means coal, uh, you know, coal based thermal power plant. The price of the cost per megawatt is cheaper, you know, it is low. But in case of solar, it is more expensive. Now the point is in case of coal, we are not considering the environmental cost and other health cost and other costs. You know, that's why it is, if you load all those things, the environmental cost, climate related cost on the coal, then the real pricing of coal based thermal power station will be much more. In the year 1980, coal, one ton of coal was costing one rupee, 150 rupees per ton. Today, it is 2,800 rupees per ton. Whereas in the year 1980, solar power cost was for one watt, it was about $100. Now today it has come down to $1.5 for one watt. We call it grid parity. When solar photovoltaic or solar energy cost will be at par with the coal and beyond 2020, the solar power cost will be cheaper than the coal. I, I feel everything should be changed, keeping in mind the climate related issues. Everything, all of our steps, all of our lifestyle. And that, in that context, students are very important. The institutions are very important because they create the base of the society. They, they are the backbone of the society. We are now having 5 kilowatt of power in our college building. The prices of the sales have come down and as a result of that we don't need to have a a large amount of money. We have a prolonged hours of load sharing. That's why we wanted to get a support from the solar power, which will be non-intermittent, it will be continuous, and at the same time, it will be also uh, very useful for running the instruments in our laboratories. Uh, for this, we approached uh, the local MP he extended his helping hand and gave us a strong support. And with the support of uh, this MP-led fund, we could initiate the uh, solar power project in our college. Now, if we don't start, then, then uh, you know, we'll miss the bus. So, since solar is expensive, apparently, not that we should not consider solar. We should consider solar from now itself, we should start, our readiness should be there, but after some time we will find solar will be cheaper. 
environment is one of the major area of concern which we thought all our children should be aware of and as a part of that strategy we thought that it is very important that we not only teach them we show them we what we exactly do what we say so we decided that we will install a solar um, system we started first with 5 kilowatt you are sitting here in this room this room whole room is uh, powered by solar energy then we have gone for a 100 kilowatt and we are planning in the step 3 for to go for a 250 kilowatt unit this price is a very very important factor and but we are really happy to say that the government incentives are now extremely good we got one crore for our this 100 crore uh, solar project we got a government in government of india incentive of 1 crore 30 lakhs of rupees we have taken uh, 30 street lights solar street lights which is already operating in this uh, campus that we got each street light only at 5000 rupees it will be a totally a non viable project in case somebody wants to put up a solar project in a normal land instead of making it for either using it as a cultivation land or for cultivation purpose or making it useful for industry or useful for some other purpose but there are thousands of buildings on rooftop we can all individually put up that plant and have the same amount of energy without any land being used People who are connected with the solar industry, they are also technically highly competent. And as such, there is absolutely no problem whatsoever in implementing any of this project. We are into manufacturing of solar modules and giving total power solutions. We generally listen to the customer's requirement, understand his requirement, evaluate the total requirement, and then we design the power plant as per his requirement. So it is a tailor-driven calculations, tailor-driven project. Implementation process, process is, you can say, it takes about one month because it's on the rooftop, so there has to be cutting of the roof, and then installation of the solar panel, and then converter, uh, putting the converter and battery sets. So it takes about, oh, about a month to install the whole system. If most of our institutions and big residential apartments they installed solar system for their community lighting or common uh, loads like water pumps. So uh, I think uh, by next five years this should be encouraged and uh, I think um, most of the uh, common lighting purpose if it is used it will be a very big revolution. Once they put up then what will happen? Their electricity bill will go down and their emission level will come down. So in that manner the school becomes green. If we go to 250 kilowatts uh, size, we'll be in a position to supply it to the grid so that we can sell the power and there is a very good price. The government is paying 17 rupees for solar power in the grid. So it's economically viable. The efficiency is improving. We get good efficiency solar cells available. The life is more than 25, 30 years. So investing in solar is the best alternative nowadays. The solar industry is the latest industry. Those who have started, they are technically very sound. You know, it's not like an old uh, industry which is going on for so many years and not been updated. It has started with the latest technology. Rather, solar industry in India may be even more modern than the solar industry which started in Europe and America because it started uh, latest industry. So they are technically very competent to guide anybody. Any technical points from us, they are most welcome. Uh, we will give them any technical service free of cost, that is our objective. Because government is here to help the people, to school, to institutions. We will be very happy to provide any information if other institutions are coming forward with any queries. We will be very happy to share our experience and we'll be very happy to be useful if we are useful to somebody else. Uh, under National Climate Action Plan, the first mission is the solar mission, National Solar Mission. So government is giving a lot of emphasis on promotion of solar and solar energy in, in particular, but renewable energy as a well. whole. Even now, yes, coal-based thermal power plant dominates, but it's gradually declining. It will decline. It will decline finally and renewable will take its own place.